Welcome to Data Crunch. Now, this is a show where we talk about big data, data analytics, uh, machine learning, and also AI. All right. Now, we've been talking a lot about uh, people who come from non-technological background coming into data science, switching their careers into data science. But if you now talk about people who are actually technological, uh, they, they know some, a bit of technology already. Uh, they're probably developers, programmers, and they want to go into data science. Right? We never talked about that before. So today we're going to explore into that subject and see what we can you know, discuss and, and, and you know, find out here today. Okay, so again, we have Dr. Lau, uh, Chief Data Scientist and also founder of LEED. And we're gonna, let's start this session off by asking a very quick question. Now, um, let's talk about full-stack developers who turn into data scientists, all right? So is it, a, is it an advantage for, for people who have a technological background to go into data science? So for most of the guys out there, when you don't have a technology background, you will be thinking like, yeah, I cannot become a data scientist because I don't know how to program, right? This is a question that has been asked most of the time and then we have been discussing it since uh, earlier episodes as well. But what I'm going to tell you is that having the ability to know how to write programs is an advantage. Yeah, it's an advantage. It's just like, uh, if, I, if I know Chinese, uh, would it be better if I go and learn uh, and Japanese mm -hmm. uh, or mm -hmm. Korean? Yes, there, there's definitely an advantage. But it doesn't stop someone who is coming from a pure English English speaking background just to learn uh, Japanese and Korean. Uh, it's, it's the same, it's the same right, reason. Right. So when you know how to program and it makes it easier for you to enter uh, data scientists because enter data science because you know the tools already. So uh, by looking at Python or R, you wouldn't feel alien. But most web developers, they, they won't be using Python yet, right? They'll be using things like uh, JavaScript, for JavaScript, example. right? Yeah. So but, transferring from that to Python, what, what are the challenges like? You know, how is it going to be? So JavaScript and Python, they are, they are both scripting language. So mm -hmm. it's a programming language that runs on a runtime. So they, they cannot be compiled into an exe file like, yeah, for in layman's terms. Oh. Yeah. So, but uh, on top of that, uh, the, the things like, for example, the types of variables, writing if-else statements, writing loops, they are all, they're all the same. Yeah, the logic mm -hmm. is the same. So if, if I were to take this a little bit further, I would say, yeah, because you already know how to construct a program. So you have the knowledge to write programs and that will give you a little, a little bit, uh, a good head start. All right. And, and someone who, let's say I know JavaScript yeah. and I want to learn Python today. Yeah. What is the realistic timeline of how long I would take to learn and you know, go into Python, understand Python, and be able to do a real data scientist job in a real working environment? Very good question. So realistically speaking, if you're able to commit to save eight to 12 hours per week, yeah, okay. you should be able to do that within one to two months easily. Yeah, mm -hmm. just to convert or just to uh, transit from JavaScript to Python. But in order to get yourself familiarized with Python data science tools and all the things like Panda, Psyche, uh, NumPy, etc., then that itself will take, uh, you will take the same amount of time for somebody who has no technical background. They learn Python and mm -hmm. then they need to spend, let's say they spend three months to learn those things. And then you as a technical guy will spend about three months too. Right, right. Yeah, right, so right. there's no, it's on a level playing ground. Okay, yeah. So, 12 hours a week. Yeah. So that's about, let's say, one to two hours per day. Yeah, around there. Around there. So, so what kind of things that you, you think uh, developers like that, programmers who have some technical experience should, should practice on, I would say, real, real world data sets and all that? Yeah. Where, where is some place they can actually play with such data, you know, get some data out and do something with it? Okay, that, that should be my question to you, <laughs> Robert. You have been working with me for, for quite, uh, on these topics for quite a right, while, right, yeah? right. You have all the webinars and stuff. So where's the number one website that I always recommend people to go to when it comes to data set? Kaggle. Kaggle, right? Kaggle. Just go to Kaggle. Go to Kaggle and get, your, get the data set. And I think most people is when they look for uh, things to learn, they always look from a tools perspective. So for, i give you an example, a very lame example. Mm -hmm. Let's say today, uh, if I were to say, Ruben, come, I teach you how to use a screwdriver, would you be happy? Okay, okay. Uh, but come on, let, let's, I'll teach you how to use a drill. Okay, but what, why, why, why drill? I don't, I don't want a drill. Uh, exactly, but what about I go to, I go to you and say, Ruben, come, uh, I show you how to assemble a, a wooden house, a small wooden house, miniature wooden house, will you be interested? So, so. So, so, okay, something that you're interested to build. Mm. Uh, so, mm. so give, me, give me an example. Build? Yeah. What sort of things do you have in mind to build? 
yeah anything right? like uh if, if you if you get to build so uh, it's the same thing right if i if i go around and teach you to say I, i'll teach you how to use hammer how to use a saw how okay. to use a screwdriver okay. you won't be interested but i'm going there to teach you hey you get to build a miniature house and then you can use this as a birthday ah, gift for your niece ah, uh, for your girlfriend and okay. uh, that's totally different thing okay. so same thing right when you try to get a data set you don't think of Oh, I'm I'm going to learn NumPy today. I'm going to learn uh, pandas today. So mm-hmm. that that's a wrong way to start, I would say. So you are you are going to start thinking right. All right, I'm going to learn how to predict uh, the attrition rate for our company employees. This is a typical classic data set that we get, right? Mm-hmm. Or I'm going to predict uh, who are the people who will die in the Titanic disaster. Okay. This is the webinar <laughs> that we discussed before. Okay. So you are learning predictive analytics. You are learning modelings, but you're applying it to a use case, to a real use case ah, that's interesting. Okay. So, so, yeah. So, so that, that what you mean is, you know, when you learn uh, data science or, or try to learn anything at all, you don't learn things in isolated cases. Correct. Right? You try to actually solve a problem or a project by itself. Yeah. Don't don't learn a tool uh, just for the sake of learning, right? Yeah. So it's, that's the same thing when people try to learn a language. They they learn the fundamental pieces, that's fine. But after that, you learn smaller things. So when you learn English, you learn the basic word caps, and then you learn how to form a sentence. After you learn how to form a sentence, you learn how to write a paragraph. And then after you learn how to write a paragraph, you learn how to write uh, an essay. Mm. Yeah. And then... From there, you use English as a medium, as a tool for you to communicate with, with other people. Right. Mm. Now, I think that applies to a lot of different types of learnings, not just data science, but a lot of different types of things that you learn out there in, in, in the world, right? Uh, anyway, we'll be back again right after the short break here. Okay, welcome back to Data Crunch. Now, uh, we talk about, you know, people who have tech development or, or tech background moving to data science, right? All right, so the next thing I want to ask and talk about is, you know, what are these, what are the advantage for people like that to move into data science in terms of moolah? Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, whenever we, we talk about data science and talk about presentations, the one thing that always come to the, the mind, come to our mind is the last mile. All right. It's not a good word, but the last mile is the presentation, the last mile delivery. So, no matter how good is a model, how good is your analysis, how good is a result, the last thing that you have to do is you have to present it to, to somebody, to the stakeholders, mm. so mm. your target audience. Um, on top of the soft skills that you need to have, like a storytelling that we, we discussed in the we previous discussed. yeah episodes, right? Uh, the skill sets that you need to have is how to build a dashboard. When it comes to production data science, mm-hmm. you need to build a dashboard. And usually people learn how to build dashboard. If they don't have a programming background, they need to use things like Tableau, uh, Excel. Which so, you know, can be very limiting in a way. Can be very limiting and uh, laborious and time-consuming because you cannot... Um, you cannot replicate those things. Yeah, you have to go in and click here and click mm-hmm. there to, to generate those stuff. La. I mean, Tableau and, uh, or SAS, they have scripting features, but quite limited. So if you know how to do web development, you can take your results, put it into a dashboard, and then you can release it as a website. Right. And there are a lot of free tools like HiCharts, D3JS, that allow you to create stunning visualization that's really uh, highly interactive as well. So you can click drill up, drill down, and basically do anything that you want. The only limitation, I think, is your creativity and imagination. Right, right. And when, when in, your, in your experience, when people switch from, let's say, a web developer mm. to becoming a data scientist, is that normally fueled by uh, the desire to drive more income or to get better salaries? Do you think that that's a normal um, desire? Uh, or what I, have you I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say no, especially in the Asian culture, right? <laughs> um, driven by income and social status is, is always the must. Mm. Uh, but I don't think that it, it lasts you for too long. Meaning that thing wouldn't fuel you for a 10, 20 years career. Yeah, if I'm just thinking about money, whenever I start my career, I, I wouldn't become a web developer. I started as a web developer. Okay. Um, actually, I started as a developer. So I write console programs and stuff. And then I build websites and then ASP, PHP, JavaScript. But 
if we would just to think about money every time, right? It wouldn't. It, it would be a job, lah. A job will, will always be a job, and then you always hope for the next job who gives you a better pay, lah, like mm. normal jobs. But mm. data scientist or data science career is something that is very exciting and sort of like have a bright future and promising uh, career prospects. So you know that you are going to become uh, probably you can start off as a data engineer and then uh, associate or junior data scientist, okay. and then you become a data scientist. Then if you want to like. Uh, you want to become more senior, you want to take on some management role, then you can become, you can choose to be a chief data scientist if you want to. Mm, okay, so it, we shouldn't take money as the main goal, but that money should be the byproduct of yeah. you know, everything that we're doing in the, in the field, right? Now, I'm going to jump the gun a little bit further here, okay? So we talk about being a data scientist, yeah. right? So let's say I'm now a data scientist. Now, what comes after being a data scientist? Okay. Where do you see data scientists heading to? Or where do we go from that? Okay. It may, may be blur right now, but where do we see where do you see? What what are your views on that? Yeah. Uh so a lot a lot of my, my friends, okay, a lot of my peers, they they we started off as data mining people, okay? So uh we do data mining, we do uh, a lot of number crunching, analyzing things. And after five to ten years in the industry, they we, we parted ways. So some of them they choose to become they they are more engineer mindsets so they become uh, researchers uh, or engineer in the research R&D department and given the industry right now you, there's a lot of possibility you can become an AI engineer you can become a machine learning engineer to work mm. on those algorithms so that's one possibility so meaning that data science or the data scientists data science skills allow you to go into different verticals and you can go quite deep in particular verticals and you choose the the area that you want it can be uh, Automotive, it can be cars, it can be uh, e-commerce, it can be retail, it can be manufacturing. So you wouldn't be limited by the particular verticals, mm -hmm. unlike other engineers. So if you are a chemical engineer, it's quite unlikely that you jump from chemical engineering to mechanical engineering. Right, but if you do data science in different types of uh, verticals that like you mentioned earlier, yeah. it's going to be a very different experience altogether. Right. And, and do they have to relearn a lot of things or it's going to be a very big shift between those verticals? Or is somehow correlated, you know, we can actually, you know, borrow a few skills from here and there and mix them around. Yeah. Uh, good question. So the fundamental skills, I would say, is, uh, is almost the same. So the analysis, the way that we treat the data, you know, your database skills, uh, analysis skills, Python, R, they're, they're all the same. But when it comes to, if you want to become a great data scientist in a particular industry, you definitely need to have a very good knowledge in the particular field. But uh, I have also seen as exceptional or outstanding cases is that sometimes the problem has been there for, for quite a while and people in the industry, they sort of like accept the way that this is how things should be. Lah, okay, mm -hmm. uh, We do it the way that, you know, the, the old people <laughs> do it. <lah. laughs> yeah, so they, they never think about innovations and then try to come up with new ways. But when a data scientist or a data science person enter the, the field, because they are not that familiar with the field, but they know that, hey, uh, actually this data is telling you something different. Right, right. Yeah, so they, they come in with a, a very fresh and new perspective that can bring a lot of excitement to the industry as well. Mm. But do you think data scientists also have to command a bit of, you know, like they be they need to be people who can actually speak up to stakeholders? Yeah. I mean, imagine you go to a new industry and that industry hasn't tried any any data science any data science any data science at all before, and you go in there and they direct you to what to do instead of you telling them what to do. Yeah. You know that kind of thing. So do you think data scientists should actually be uh, someone who can speak to stakeholders, having the communication skills? So um for those of you who don't know I'm I'm an introvert yeah <laughs> inside so but because of data science uh, we have to do a lot of uh I wouldn't say debate but you need to communicate a lot with people the good thing is that whenever you communicate you are not based on your gut feeling mm. you're not based on you know uh your your personal opinion you're not based on my past 10 20 years experience you're basically your uh, um your discussion is always around data driven decision mm, mm. so it's supported by evidence and facts so that's the part that i like and i'm there to speak up otherwise usually especially in the early stage of my career i'm like 20 25 years old you have to talk to senior people who are in the industry like 
in Chinese always say like, yeah, I eat more salt than you eat your, your rice, <laughs> that sort of stuff. So then you will be intimidated in, in that sense. But yeah, now, now that you have those numbers, you have those stats and uh, figures to, to back you up, to support you, they will also be a bit more open up. Mm, yeah, mm, because mm. Uh, numbers don't lie. Including China Man business as well? Uh, a little bit. So <laughs> If uh, you, you look at the industry, some of the clients, I cannot tell you who, okay. Okay? <laughs> but uh, they, they slowly realize that if they want to become, uh, you, they want to sustain for another next 10 or 20 years, they have been successful in the past because of the, the Chinaman style, right? they are, well, they are, so to speak. Yeah, but in, yeah. in the next 10, 20 years, in order to scale up your business, in order to take your business to the next level, or some of them, they have to be ready to pass down to their uh, second or third generations already, then they have to adopt and embrace this sort of environment mm. and data mindset. Well, that, that's, that's a good thought and also a good answer. Now, we've come to the end of the show. Again, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button and uh, follow us on Facebook. You know, visit us on www.thelead.io and if you have any more questions that you'd like us to get uh, to, to talk about or to answer, just leave a comments down in the comment section below. And uh, as always, anything else to say for this uh, episode of Data Crunch? So I think um, to wrap things up, I you are looking at the full stack web developer who turned data scientist, okay? So everything is possible. And I love the part where everybody's now start to realize the importance of data because eventually all companies will become a data company, whether you like it or not, because uh, you are wearing, uh, you're wearing your wearable devices, your, your watches, your mobile phones, your uh, everything, your social media, everything is going to leave a digital footprint yeah, yeah, yeah. and generate data, yeah? Yeah, we even sell our data to Google for exactly. their advertisements. Uh, exactly. I'm not sure that part needs to be <laughs> muted or not, but Google, Facebook, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so that wraps up our Data Crunch series for today, and uh, we'll see you in the next series. Thanks again for watching, and see you. See ya.